Okay, so today we want to talk about round tripping audio from Premiere Pro CC over to Audition CC, uh, why we'd want to do that, and in what scenarios and how that works. You might ask yourself, why don't we just do audio in Premiere? And the reason is they make it kind of hard. <laughs> I don't know why, but let me give you an example. I got a bunch of video files here over in my project pane, so I'm just going to select one, right click on it, and hit new sequence from clip, and it's going to open up this sequence. So now to uh, look at the audio, we want to go, I'm going to hit shift six, bring up the audio track mixer. And then right over here, you see this little hidden triangle and Adobe's hidden some stuff there. So if you twirl that down, now you're going to see the rack effects for this mixer. So let me hit the tilde key to bring up the whole thing so you can see what's going on. That just brings the window full screen here. So I'm going to throw some effects on this track and I'll just do it kind of wrong. I'm going to add... I'm going to do the compressor first, and then I'll throw some EQ on there. And maybe uh, maybe I'll just put on a loudness radar. So say I've done this, and I decide, oh, I, I've, got these, I've got these plugins kind of out of sequence for what I would normally want to do. I'd want to have the EQ first. I can't just select the EQ and move it up in my rack, and I can't select them, the compressor and move it down. Uh, that's extremely difficult. I can't move it from track to track. I can't drag th this over. I can't option drag it over and copy it over to another track. I can't hit command C and then come over here and hit command V and paste it. I can't really do anything. The only option I have is to start over from scratch, come in here and then, okay, now I want the EQ to be first. This basically makes it really hard to work in Premiere doing audio, and that is something we're gonna remedy. Typically, if you're doing any kind of narrative video work, you might have soundtrack or sound effects, you might have music, you might have dialogue, and in that situation, the typical workflow would be to do the sound last. So you layer everything in your sequence and you wouldn't really sweeten and mix everything until the end. Uh, and this kind of scenario is a little different. These are just basic assembly edits. There's a bunch of media here and they're all gonna be separate in separate sequences. I don't want to have to do the audio every time in every sequence when I'm working on one of these little videos. That would be, uh, that's not the best way to work. So I wanna be more efficient and move this along faster. So what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm gonna rename this uh, sequence. I'm gonna call it assembly. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna select the rest of these files. I'm going to bring everything into this one assembly sequence. And then there we have it. So there's an hour and a half, uh, almost two hours of stuff. And what we want to do is send this over as a multi-track session into Audition. Even though we don't have multiple tracks of audio, we don't have music, we don't have sound effects, but we're going to bring it over as a multi-track so that we have a multi-track session in Audition. So we don't want to really work in a waveform editor for this kind of workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into the edit menu, down into edit in Adobe Audition, and select sequence. You can also create a hotkey, and I have my own here, but I'm going to do it from the menu. Now, first thing that you'll see is this dialog box. It's going to pop up. And it's going to ask us, well, it's going to give us some options. Right now, the name is exactly what the name of my sequence is. And it's going to create a uh, adobe.sesx file. And it's going to be named exactly the same. And it's also going to give us an option to put it in a certain path. The default for where it's going to save this file is in the project file folder that you're working in currently. So if I click Browse you're going to see that it's created this folder, Adobe Audition Interchange, and it's going to save the files in there. And this folder just happens to be in the folder that I'm currently working in. So what that means is that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about the name. You don't have to worry about where it's going to go. It's going to go where it needs to go, and it's going to keep everything within your project that you're working in. You might have a reason to put it in a different place, and if so, you can do that here. Also, down here, we're going to send the entire sequence over. It's going to use dynamic link. We're going to use, uh, if, it, if you have any keyframes or volume keyframes already in there, it'll keep that information and send it over. And then here's the uh, probably the most useless part. Uh, you have to have this checked if you want it to do anything. <laughs> so there you have it. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to think about it for a minute, and then it's going to 
port that over and we'll be into Adobe Audition. Okay, so now over in Audition, we have this multi-track assembly session that we have. So you'll notice that right here in this tab, we're in the multi-track editor. And if I click over here, we'd be back over in the waveform editor. So these are, it's a little hard to see. They don't make it that easy to see, but you're in, you've got two different tabs there. So we can, if we wanted to, perhaps select on one of these files here and then open it up in the waveform editor. Uh, but we're not going to do that. Right now, you can see that we've got multiple tracks. I had those two empty tracks over in uh, Premiere. You can see these two empty tracks here. They came over. I don't have any audio there. I could have deleted them before I sent it over. So what we're going to do is come over to the effects rack. You want to make sure that you have your track selected. That's why it's a good idea actually to delete empty tracks because if I have this selected, sometimes that happens and then I'll be adding effects here and I wonder why I don't see anything in the meters because I'm doing something to an empty track. So let's make sure that this is selected. And if you go to the track effects window here, the effects racks window, you're going to see the track effects tab. And I'm going to apply effects directly to this entire track. And what we can do is we can save presets for the individual that you're working with. These are the default presets that come with it. We can ignore those. We're going to build our own rack, and I just want to say that this this is not about how to use Audition, so I'm not going to spend time on on these how to use these plugins. This is more about the workflow, but let me just go ahead and create an effects rack, and then we'll save it, and then you can see how we'll bring that up later. Let's start with, uh, I'm just going to throw a little bit of EQ on there. I'm going to high pass filter, and then we'll let off, and maybe just do a touch of that. Let's go to the de and I'm just going to do... Something like that. Okay, let's do some compression. We need a multiband compressor. And let's see, let's do something like that a little bit. Okay, so like I said, I'm not actually really doing this. I'm just throwing some stuff on here so that we can get a rack going. Uh, let's add, let's add the loudness radar and we'll choose cinema and then we'll kind of see where our levels are at. Well, they're they're a little bit hot, but we saw that because these were recorded hot for some reason. So I'm just gonna bring it down probably four dB with the output of the uh, compressor there. I'm gonna re reset the loudness radar meter. And it's at minus twenty three, minus twenty four. I usually go around minus twenty one or twenty two. But you get the point. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this rack. Let's just say, let's just pretend this sounds good, and we want to save it and be able to recall this later. So I'm going to click this little button, and in this case, I'm going to say underscore. Uh, let's see, underscore client rack. Name your client. Put it in there. Um, whatever whatever makes sense to you. Hit OK. And then I, I chose underscore as the first one so that it shows up down at the bottom here. So that you don't have to, you know, if I just said client rack, it would be up here under the C's and be harder to find. So I put all my custom stuff down at the bottom with an underscore there. So great. So now we've got this. Let's just uh, pretend that it sounds good and we're ready to roll. So I am going to save this project and it's going to ask me where I want to save this. And I'm going to save it in the uh, location that it's putting it, which is where I want it. And I'm just going to leave the name and everything. So essentially just save it. Now, after you've done that, go up to the multi-track and choose export to Adobe Premiere Pro. You can also set up a hotkey for that. Get this little dialog bo box that pops up. And what it's going to do is bring in a .xml over to Premiere. And it's going to put it in that audio edition interchange folder that I mentioned earlier. And sample rate, well, the sample rate should have been 48. I think it should have been recorded originally at 48. And in, th in this case, I think it's because the original recording might have been in 44.1. But I'm going to just choose 48 anyway. And we're going to export each track as a stem. So you have some options here, but I choose to export each track as a stem. And then I have this checked because if I don't have this checked, it won't do the thing I want it to do. Not really sure why that's there, but say la vie. So this uh, happens to be a lot of audio here. I think it's like an hour and a half. So this process is going to take a while. So uh, we'll speed it up and then continue on in a sec. 
Okay, so now over in Premiere, we've got this little pop-up and it's saying, what do you wanna do with this sequence that I've just imported? It's an XML, but it's bringing in a sequence. In fact, it's bringing in one stem. So what I'm gonna do is say, put it on a new audio track. I also have the option of just choosing one of the original tracks there. So actually let's put it on audio too. That makes more sense. But here it is, it's laid it in there. And as you can see, this is one file for all of these different pieces of media. So what I would now do is start to break it up. So over here in the project pane, I've got the XML file and I've got that audio track. This one here is sitting here and I'm just gonna drop them into this folder for Audition Audio just to make it clean. And then I've got this assembly sequence. I'm actually gonna move that over into sequences, close that, and I'm gonna duplicate this sequence and I'm gonna call it assembly two so that I'm gonna open it. And then now that I've got that, I'm going to delete all that original audio because we don't want it anymore. Select that, I'm gonna hit option, up arrow, and bring that up onto that track. And then I'm gonna just hit Command K along the way here so that I will have individual audio tracks with each different video. Because remember, these are different videos that are gonna have their own sequences. Now that I've done that, so I've replaced the original audio, then I would duplicate this sequence a whole bunch of times, once for each piece of media here, and you know, delete every piece of media that's not supposed to be in that sequence, and then I'll have each piece of media in its own sequence with its own set of audio and it's all done and it's already fine and sounds good. And then I don't have to do it over and over and over again. So this can actually be a pretty fast process because if I work on another project with the same person, then I'll just be over in Audition. Imagine that I've just sent this over there. I'm gonna remove this effects rack. Imagine I had working on a new project and I just sent all these different videos over here into Audition, it would be literally as easy as going and choosing your rack for this particular client and just spot checking everything and you know making sure the levels are good and it sounds right. If it was recorded in a, on a different day, it might sound a little different and so forth, but you're basically, that's your baseline. You just pull that up and then you can tweak things as you need to and then send it back over. So that's about it. Hopefully that helps with your workflow and will save you just a little bit of time next time you do one of these projects.